Hi there, everybody. My name is Peter. Uh, I'm a product manager at Google. And I'm here this morning to talk about Eddie Stone and the Google Beacon platform for location and proximity superpowers. Uh, I'm part of the location infrastructure group at Google. And we can get into sort of arbitrarily technical detail about uh, all the ins and outs of location detection. But before all that, I want to introduce you to my dog. This is, this is Oscar. He's a, a four-year-old papillon. And one of my favorite things at the weekend is, is taking him for a walk up to Hampstead Heath. And as we're walking around, he's, he's constantly sniffing at bushes, investigating sticks, deciding if this is something he should play with. Is this an important place? Does this matter to me? And one of the most delightful things about Oscar is that I get this sense that he has a really good idea about all the places and objects that matter to him. And in this session, I want to talk a bit about how we can make users' devices almost as awesome as Oscar. So we humans have been building location infrastructure for a long time. And in fact, beacons are not really new at all. We've been putting them around the coastlines of countries so that ships can navigate at sea. And in fact, all of the Google Beacon platform is, is represented in this picture. We've got the beacon itself, obviously the lighthouse. The user's device is looking for the beacon. It's a bit like the telescope of the, the captain of the ship. But then once the device has found a beacon, how does it know what it means? Well, on the ship, there's a chart. It lays out where all the beacons are, and it says what they mean. And that chart can be used by any ship. It doesn't matter where they're going. It's a single piece of information that can help multiple different ships on multiple different journeys to get where they're going. So Eddystone beacons mark important places and objects in exactly the same way so that your mobile device can understand them. And just to show you, I've brought a beacon with me. Now we know what this little pocket is for. Um, this, this is a, a Bluetooth beacon. This is one of the smallest ones I could find. If I pull it apart, it has a little tiny battery in it and a little circuit board. People will ask, how long does the battery last in this thing? Well, it depends how big the battery you buy is. Uh, one this size may be a couple of months, but uh, years if you get a, a beacon with a bunch of AA batteries in it. So you mark important places. And once this location infrastructure exists, uh, the question is, what, what does this bring for users? Well, Google has a number of location products. Other people in my group build Google Maps. And obviously, your mobile device knows where you are. It can tell you that when I took this screenshot, I was at our office in Zurich. We also see this kind of infrastructure being useful in search queries. So 30% of search queries involve locations. And the same kind of infrastructure can power that kind of interaction. But there's other slightly less obvious things. Not only does my phone know where I am right now, it knows where I've been, so all of the moments that have mattered to me. It's really useful if you're filling in your expenses, because you can take photos of receipts, and you know exactly where you were when you took them. But what if somebody's coming to your store and taking a photo there? Isn't it useful for them to know that the picture of that particular pair of shoes was taken in a particular place? So that helps me with the history of, of where I've been in the world. But when you aggregate all of this information, you can provide useful information to consumers as well. So here's the place page for a restaurant in Zurich. And you'll notice at the bottom, we actually tell you what the popular times are for that place. We'll tell you when you can arrive at a restaurant so that you don't have to queue for too long. And the point I want to make today is that all of these interactions, all of this functionality that's provided to users is provided by location infrastructure that's been deployed through the world, Wi-Fi access points, cell towers, even GPS. So what is Eddystone? Eddystone is an open beacon format. So that little widget I showed you earlier, Eddystone is the language that it speaks. And we decided to open source Eddystone so that you wouldn't have to create any dependencies on Google or any other company when you uh, deploy infrastructure in your venues. And when you go out and, and look at the beacon market, you'll find that there are many different types of beacon that you can buy. The important point is, it doesn't matter what size or shape your beacon is. You can plug it in, connect to USB. You can have a battery-powered one. But the important thing is that the signal that it's broadcasting is the same. 
And this is what eddy stone is. It's the signal that a beacon broadcasts. So some of you may have used beacons before. Um, and in the past, there was this way of thinking about beacons where you would deploy them to mark an important place. Great. That beacon would then talk to a particular app. And then it would probably talk to a particular feature within that app. And you better have a, a very valuable feature if you're going to go out into the world and do real world work in order to power that particular feature in your app. The way Google is changing the game here is that we're looking at beacons as location infrastructure. So you deploy these generic identifiers once, and they can mean different things to different apps and services on users' devices. So today, I just want to give you a, a couple of examples of things that you can do when you've deployed beacons in your, in your venues. The first one is a product which is rolling out to Android devices right now and that we announced at I.O., our developer conference back in May. This is nearby notifications. These are quiet notifications, so they don't make your phone buzz. A user has to ask, what is around me that I can interact with? And there are a few different ways that those interactions can go. You can associate a mobile web page with a beacon. So if you want a user to know that there's a particular piece of web content that matters in a place, then you can say, this URL, I'm going to hook it to this beacon. If a user has your app installed, then you can intent, you can link into that particular app. So you can go to a view, and you can get the user to take a particular action there. A good example of app intent is like when you click the mail to link and it opens, you, not only opens your, your email client, it actually takes you to the compose window and the address is already filled in. So exactly that kind of link you can associate with a place or an object. We have a whitelisting program that allows you to tell the user that you have an app for that place with a particular piece of functionality that will be useful to them right there. So a good example is if you're going up to the photo kiosk in a, in a pharmacy or, or somewhere like that, then if you have to have an app to interact with the object that's in front of you, then we will whitelist your app so that it, not only do we tell the user that your app exists, but we take them straight to the Play Store so that they can install it, and we drop them straight into the view where they can take an action at that place. And finally, all of this works with the new Android Instant apps. These are apps that you go to a place, they arrive on your phone, you can take an interaction, and when you leave, they're gone. They're the most seamless kind of experience that a user can get from an app that they use occasionally. So this is great for consumers, but what does it mean for people who own venues? Well, just a month ago at the uh, GPS Summit, um, we talked about improving store visits with beacons. So I mentioned earlier that beacons are part of our location infrastructure stack. And with some of the people in this room, actually, we've demonstrated a significant uplift in the precision and the recall that we can get from beacons that are deployed in venues. So what this means is that we're more precisely able to detect visits to stores for a particular user who may have seen your ad online. When you deploy beacons in a venue, then we're able to ingest them into the rest of location infrastructure and it goes into location history, the, the feature I showed you earlier, and also in these metrics that, that, that you can look at as advertisers. So why do we need a, a beacon platform in order to do this? It's not just the widgets that you, you stick up on the wall. Well, I've already talked about the more reliable place detection that you can get from a beacon. A beacon is a really high quality signal that a user's device is in a particular place. But by making it so that your beacon can be managed like a piece of cloud infrastructure, we make the whole platform extensible. That means that you can deploy a beacon once. You can say, I'm going to associate a nearby notification with it. I want to use it for store visits. I'm going to do some work in my app. And it's all of the same infrastructure that can be used for all of those different kinds of interaction. As well as that, you can share and control access to your beacon signal. So using Eddystone EID, you can deploy a beacon that only you can use. That's important, because if you're putting out a, a signal into the world, you want to make sure that it's used for exactly the purposes that you're interested in. So by deploying Eddystone EID, 
what the beacon transmits actually uses a cryptographic key on the beacon and a timer in order to change what it's broadcasting in a way that only an authorized application can understand. And finally, I'm going to say it again, location infrastructure is extensible, so you can use it for many different purposes. So I have a whole bunch of different interactions, all the way from the sort of foreground use cases, things like you know, just Google Maps knowing where I am, all the way to the background cases like location history and store visits. Um, you can take pictures of this slide, as I see you are doing, and then look at it afterwards. But the most important thing is to remember this URL, g.co slash beacons, and you can talk to your Google representatives about store visits, Eddystone, and the Google Beacon platform. Thank you very much.